Well, hey there, everybody. How you doing? Dave Fenoy here. It's another Wednesday, and of course, that means another Ask Dave Fenoy Anything, and it is 6 p.m. Pacific, so here we go. Uh, before we get into it, a reminder, all the Ask Dave Fenoy's Anything live on my YouTube channel, Dave Fenoy VoiceOver Training. Uh, if you're somebody interested in taking voiceover uh, coaching with me, uh, click on DaveFenoy.com. Uh, you can book yourself. You save money if you book five or ten, uh, as opposed to going one at a time. But uh, I'll take it as it comes. Um, I've got a guest this evening. Um, now, I first remember her from a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago, uh, when I was doing some uh, teaching at uh, SAG-AFTRA, the Don LaFontaine Studio, which I still do from time to time. Haven't in the last year because of COVID, of course. Um, but uh, I remember her, well, one, she's a good-looking woman, and two, she was very intense and very quiet. Uh, but when she stepped to the mic, there was always something just a little bit special about her. Uh, and... I hadn't really seen much of her uh, since, and uh, then I started uh, hearing stuff about Andia Winslow. So let's say hello to Andia Winslow. Let's see. Whoa, let me do that and uh, bring you on here. And there she is. How are you? Hello, Dave Fenoy. How are you? I, I, you know, and I... It sounds, I don't know, condescending or something. I am so proud of you. I, Thank you. I, I am so proud of uh, the work you've been doing, uh, the distance you have come in this. Uh, now, I, I'm sure in your life, great things were expected. Um, I know you grew up in Seattle, um, but anyone who goes to Yale, uh, <laughs> great things are expected from. Now, uh, were you that great student and also an athlete or a great student? And, were you both? Uh, did the, 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 the golf uh, get you in there? What, what was going on with Yale and golf? It was both. My, one of my parents is, well, both my parents are educators um, in some capacity. So I played a high level junior golf and also academics were really important in my family. And so, you know, I could have gone to a golf school or sports school, but my parents were like, no. <laughs> so that was the compromise, playing collegiate golf, but also going to a school that was uh, worthy of my efforts. Yeah. Now, my parents were very uh, education-oriented as well. Any particular things you can remember your mom and dad saying all your life? Uh, I think I was bred to think I could do anything, and I believed them. And as a result, I've tried a lot of different things in my different uh, lives, different careers. Uh, I really, there is no task that I'm not afraid to tackle as a result. And I think that's just kind of yielded a really adventure seeking life. And it's been fulfilling for me in a, in a lot of ways. Okay, so Yale, you're playing golf for Yale. Um, and you spent some time uh, in the LPGA. Yeah, played, played professional golf, played developmental tours. Uh, my first LPGA event was in 2006. Uh, uh, bad time. It was the economy was about to tank. I turned professional in 2007. The economy tanked. There's already not purse equity between women and men's sports. And at the developmental levels, there's no money. There was no sponsorship. I was working like seven odd jobs. I was pool cleaning. I was dog walking. I was baby. I was, if I, if voiceover existed when I was turning pro, I might be somebody <laughs> in that world, but um, you know, I, I wish voiceover existed as it does now because things would have been different. But uh, I learned a lot. A lot of character was revealed. Um, had some twists and turns. Some really unexpected things happened in life uh, that informed a lot of who I am today. And uh, I really, now that I'm wiser, I can say all of those challenges made for a perfect landing where I am now. Like it, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now if I hadn't had all those things happen. So I am most appreciative now. I wasn't, you know, four years ago, three years ago, seven years ago, but now I'm like, oh, I totally get it. Thanks universe. Okay. Well, you know, there's, there's the old Hollywood story of uh, the, the actress that uh, 
was sitting at a lunch counter and the producer or director came in and spot <gasps> she's perfect let's get her screen test and put her on and make her a movie star and she becomes one um and you kind of had one of those things apparently uh there was new york marathon and you're a fitness instructor so you were giving instruction to some of the runners somebody heard you do that on mic and said hey you should do voiceover. Tell me that yes. story. Yes, so I was a senior coach, uh, teaching runners, getting them ready for the marathon. Um, one of the athletes was an agent, a big agent in New York City. And she said, "Not it's not even the timbre of your voice. It's not the dulcet tones necessarily. It's the way you tell a story. Like, I will go where you tell me to go. I, if, you, if you say this way, I will go. And that combined with the proper training could yield a great career. So my best friend got me uh, vocal lessons just on a whim, you know, teach a person how to fish. I thought that was a fun recreation and kind of left it at that. But then the coach that I work with, um, and she, Anna, she said, no, I think you could, I think you could really make waves here if you, if you pursue it properly and your discipline and your effort. And then um, my first major gig was for PBS and I was like, oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm hooked. Sign me up, coach. Where do I go? And, uh, so, and, and what was that job for PBS? Uh, it's for PBS Doc World uh, and World Channel. So I am the host of that uh, show. Uh, that, that made me a must join in SAG. And as a result, then I moved to California in 2017. And because I was so new, I knew nothing. <laughs> So that's, it was fortuitous that I met you at the uh, SAG After Foundation, because I think if I had had, uh, you know, more legs in the industry, I may not have gone to those classes because I would have known something and known better. But as a result- Or, or thought you knew. <laughs> what's that? Or thought you knew. Or thought, or thought I knew, or thought I knew. But I was a complete sponge. I lived close to SAG After at the time. So I was there almost probably every other day. I know Eric Schufer was probably like, get this girl out of here, go home. Like Urkel, like be gone. <laughs> but I I had nothing but time till I was committed to um, learning as much as I could. You were there, Bill Ratner, Sylvia Biagran, uh, Joseph Riano, all these really wonderful uh, pillars in the community. And, yeah, and, and I was so taken by y'all's standard of care and the craft, and I just, I just fell in love with the idea of seeing how good I, how good I could get in different genres. So it's been fun. Well, fantastic. Well, uh, in this business, um, you've had success. I, I would say pretty quickly, and I have a feeling that longevity is going to be yours. And part of that is because of what you have accomplished in terms of recognition. Uh, from your peers, you've won an Emmy, a Telly, a Voice Arts Award, and you were named uh, Voice Artist of the Year this year at Voice One. Um, how does that feel? Uh, well, Dave, <laughs> I mean, a little surreal because I feel like I just got here. You know, I, I, I. My goal to myself was just to do the work. You know, Bill Ratner told me just do the work, do the work. And first of all, I didn't know what that meant. But then when I just put my head down, the accolades came not because I sought them, because I was committed to doing the work. And uh, I think this year was a very interesting year for many of us because our voices were finally allowed to have uh, space in different genres. I mean, we had twin pandemics, we had COVID-19, we had racism coming to the forefront in ways it hadn't in the past. So there was a place for my voice and my experience as a black woman in America, as a person of a certain age in America. Um, and I think my voice lent itself to a lot of the stories being told in the media in ways that had not been told before. You know, so I was reading stories about Trayvon Martin and the Trayvon Martin generation, about, you know, COVID and the, and the Delta, about, you know, race and policing and, in the Midwest and my voice, the timbre of my voice and the passion I bring to it because I'm living these things and seeing my friends and family live these things, it was very real and authentic. And I think when you pair that with what an ear needs to hear, it resonates with everyone regardless of their uh, background. So I think that's why 
a lot of my projects. I mean, that's that's why they won this year. That's why I wanted to tell it for uh, narrating a documentary about voting rights. Um, you know, that's why, you know, I, I'm a reader for the New York Times and the New Yorker and Vanity Fair because my voice is resonant for these issues of this time. I think anyway. Wow, what, what a fantastic gig. I didn't, I didn't see that one on your resume. Uh, being that it might have been there, but, but I missed it. Wow. Uh, now, somebody mentioned, uh, Derek uh, R. Watts mentioned, well, Andy has a mic that has a little echo on it. And I'm just going to say, uh, you're not, uh, you, you, you sound okay. Um, it's, you're, you're not in a booth. You're in a room. You're in a hotel room. You mentioned this to me uh, before. You're not in L.A. You're in Pittsburgh. And what are you up to? <laughs> Well, well, wouldn't you know, Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh is a home of the Negro Leagues. Leagues. You know, a lot of Negro Leagues, Leagues started here in Pittsburgh, which is very exciting and historical fact. I'm here shooting a League of Their Own reboot. It's a TV series uh, by Amazon and Sony that will be coming out next year. And I play uh, the first pitcher in the uh, Negro Leagues barnstorming. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of cool to be shooting that here in this environment because this is where one of the places Negro Leagues were very strong. And so I'd like to uh, say that I'm helping keep that legacy alive as much as I can. You know what? I get a sense um, that a lot of the work that you're doing um, is really work that you are interested in, the work that, that touches your heart and soul. Uh, I read in your bio that you consider yourself uh, a real storyteller. Uh, and I believe all voiceover is storytelling. Uh, some different uh, techniques for different genres, but still, uh, you know, you got to touch people here and here uh, for it to work. Um, how hard is it for you now? I mean, you did the work. How, when you approach a script, what's the challenge? Hmm. Well, the challenge is always to bring it bring it to life. You know, there there are words on the page. And I want to give dimension to those words. So I think for me, the challenge becomes not to overthink it. Um, that's a challenge I have across the board, whether it's voiceover or sports, um, is to kind of find a flow, find a pocket and stay and live in it without overthinking and overanalyzing. That's a personal challenge. But I think more than that is not projecting what you think people want to or should hear, if that makes sense. You know, so it, it absolutely does. Yeah. You said something I say all the time in words that I I did not choose. Um, I think it's about when you really believe it here and here and just say it. Everything that should be in it is going to be there. Uh, mm -hmm. And we get in our way when we try to, oh, that word's important and let me hit that. And I want to go up on this phrase and down on that phrase. Um I know for a lot of us, that's kind of the way we learned voiceover. Uh, I think you have come by it intuitively. Uh, it took me a while. Uh, fortunately, I was pretty good at doing the DJ thing and as a word manipulator, but it took a while to get to the point where we're just taking these words that are somebody else's and we are saying them and making them our own. Right, uh, And I think that's what you're talking about. Got a, a couple of comments here, and I want to invite people to uh, say hello and ask any questions of Andrea that you have. Johnny Carswell, good for you, and Dia. Uh, follow that path and enjoy the path. And it's true, you have just a natural voice that is just comfortable and helps to make you a true talent. Best of luck. Thanks, Johnny. Johnny. Appreciate, Appreciate you. you. Yeah. Um, and Jen Henry, oh, Captain, my captain. <laughs> that was an inside Henry. joke. Well, Jen Henry, she she is, man, I would say I met Jen Henry in person, I guess, a couple months ago. She's like, like effervescent. Yes, like, there's just like, just fireworks coming off of that one, man. I was, she was, wow. She, she was my guest a couple of weeks ago. And okay. uh, she is a force in this business. Uh, she is one of the best known people because she is that person that reaches out and uh, loves and contacts everybody. A couple other people, Debbie Harada. Hey, Debbie, hey, how you doing? Debbie. Oh yeah, another wonderful, wonderful person. Yeah. Um, 
And do, 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 do. Oh, Theo Mezzacapo, student of mine. Hey, Dave. Hey, Andia. Oh, and, you know, uh, Trey, what's up, Andia? What up? All right, all right, all right. Uh, okay, so uh, what's your home studio like? Because we got to have a home studio now. What what uh, what are you mm. working with? What's my home studio like? Okay. <laughs> well. My home studio is my closet, hashtag closet chronicles. It's not fancy, it's utility. there's utility involved in my studio. I got a 416, I've got a Scarlet or I use a Apollo, I've got a Mac book, XLR cables and jackets. Yeah, so pants. clothes are absorbing the sound. Yeah, man, just, I, listen, I'm a, I'm in addition to like, Enjoying, enjoying new adventures. adventures. I, don't I don't like staying put, put very long. So I'm just like, like I can't, can't make a commitment to buy an outbound studio because what happens when I move? What happens when I want to move to someplace else to Timbuktu? I can't take this thing with me. So I'm not going to spend $7,000 right now. I'm just going to make a padded cell with all my clothes that I don't use in LA because there's no, you know, it doesn't get below 20. So like this parker here and that parker there for my time in the winter places, this parker here, moving blanket, it's all good. Oh, there you and go. And it didn't cost me any money. So, yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, I tell people all the time, one of the best places you can record is a closet with clothes in it. Yeah. Um, sometimes, if, you know, if you're actually using that closet a lot, it can uh, get a little funky in there. <laughs> but uh, no, that if that's working, that's working. Um, people, people stop. stop they, they stop, stop themselves, themselves from having glory because of the details. details. Like, like, I have I've never had... had an expensive studio. I've recorded under a golf umbrella with a whole bunch of towels around me and that stuff's on broadcast. I recorded in a hotel safe and that broadcast like, stop, stop not doing stuff because you think it has to be perfect. It don't have to be perfect, nor does it have to be pretty. No one sees the inside of my studio because it's not beautiful. Yeah, but the result is beautiful, but and that's all y'all know. <laughs> yeah, I saw I saw an article uh, a few years ago. Um, well, beyond the article, it was an experiment, uh, an experiment, scientific. Uh, a guy took uh, towels, like, you know, bath towels, acoustic foam, and uh, a couple other materials. And the thing that absorbed sound best uh, were bath towels. He'd put about mm -hmm. four or five of them together, stretch them over a frame, and that did the best job of sound absorption. And... Uh, I know if you're buying the very expensive bath towels, that could be uh, very expensive, <laughs> but uh, you can find those bad boys used or yep. uh, go to the same places that hotels use, buy a bunch of them in bulk, uh, maybe a yep. hundred bucks or so. You've got, uh, make your own. Dave Pinoy, you know what's in my studio? What's that? Costco, Costco bath, bath towels. <laughs> <laughs> I got I yellow know. ones. I got seafoam green ones. I got some gray ones. <laughs> yeah. You must have seen that uh, same experiment. Um, I didn't see it, but, you know, he's right. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's see. Johnny Carswell has a camera. I loved your answer about how you approach the copy. You don't see it as what is written, but how it should be heard. Uh, there you go. There you go. Well, you know, it's all too often we're trying to do too much. Mm -hmm. um, and we're in a world now where the professional voice uh, isn't trusted. That voice that says everything perfectly and is perfectly monitored and talking to you this way. And um, it, it's a little condescending. Um, and it doesn't touch who we are as people now, you know, despite the fact that we have many differences in our society and the world. Um, I think most of us are on the same plane in wanting to hear somebody that we relate to. Mm -hmm. Somebody uh, sometimes that reminds us of us, whether that's good or bad. Uh, someone that we can get a picture of who they are, uh, what's in their heart and what's in their soul. And if you can bring that, uh, it doesn't matter what your voice sounds like. Uh, it just matters that they can have a sense of you. Uh, right. and that you connect. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go back to uh, what Bill Ratner said to you. And uh, Bill and I go way back. One of my 
good friends in this business and, and a wonderful guy, and I'm going to get him on here sooner or later. Uh, when he said, just do the work for you, what was the work? The work was getting up, working out in the mornings, treating my voice properly, being hydrated, doing my vocal warm ups, checking my email, and responding on time, submitting my auditions in a timely fashion and making sure they were quality, following up when my agents asked me something, reaching out to people I met in person and connecting with them, talking to casting directors about how I can do better listening to TV, radio, reading everything out loud, reading everything out loud, doing market research, looking at the pronunciation of the proper names of clients so that I mess it up, listening, watching all the vlogs and interviews, reading all of, just totally immersing it and doing that every day. And I did it every day without fail, without questioning it, without asking, are we there yet? I just did it every day. And then it started becoming me and I didn't have to think about it. And that's what doing the work is. So, well, you know, they, they yeah. say um, anything that you, uh, you want to learn to do, you want to make it a habit, uh, do it for 21 days straight. And you're well, well, well on your way uh, to making that a habit. Uh, mm -hmm. I know for myself, it's uh, my job is every day here in my studio. It used to be get up and you're going to your agents and you're going to that studio and that studio. You still get to go to out from time to time. Um, but governing yourself as a professional voice actor uh, right now means having a home studio, showing up and doing the things that you're talking about. Um, you have agents, thank goodness. So uh, you're getting the best kind of work uh, or best kind of auditions. And I actually think our real job is to audition. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. One, definitely. Once I'm on the job, I am just having a lot of fun. So uh, now let me ask you this. Are you still a fitness trainer? I am not a fitness trainer one-on-one -on -one or in a group, but I do do some consulting on the side because it's just kind of part of my, I don't know, DNA. So I do some product ideation and some uh, corporate planning uh, and like planning big events. But one thing about being a fitness professional is you use your voice in ways that aren't healthy. And the minute I learned that in about 2018, 2019, I was like, I can't do this anymore because a lot of that's yelling, whether it's yelling to motivate or yelling to project over big crowds of people, it's, it causes strain. It's like having video game sessions every single day for the, re for the entire year. And um, I was seeing a lot of friends in the industry develop uh, vocal notes, and I was like, ooh, that would ruin my voice of a career. I got to stop this. So that's when I started moving uh, strictly to the product ideation. If I ever do, I every probably once a year I do pre COVID, I do a big uh, event in New York City um, where I'm hired to like be the MC or something um, for fitness festivals. But I always make sure I have a mic. I will not work without a mic. And I govern myself on that mic with proper mic technique because you do get excited, you get amped up, and you want to yell and scream. But I'm like, no, I got a job tomorrow. I can't. I can't yeah. do that. Yeah. So I, if I've really worked hard on not putting myself in those positions because I, I get excited and I get excitable. So I'm like, ah, let's just take away the the, the opportunity for failure. Yeah. You know. I, I know from doing so many video games uh, that it often has been. Uh, put me in compromising positions. I have learned how to, to handle it. Uh, but uh, every now and then you have that session that says uh, battle chatter. And you're because mm -hmm. uh, it, <laughs> it ain't just chatter. It's a whole lot of shouting. And then you're going from shouting to whispering. Uh, uh, fortunately, in the video game world now, um, not everything is shouting. Uh, mm -hmm. They've gotten much better at telling stories that uh, don't have to have a lot of that, but uh, it, it still lives on there. So I, I know from which you speak, uh, mm -hmm. and I myself, I've been uh, I've been seeing a a, a voice doctor. Uh, took a look at my pipes a couple of weeks ago, and they said, "Oh no, you're still in pretty good shape." And well, how come this? Well, let's make sure you're hydrating and doing it. Uh, and so many things that you can do: breathing, 
your breathing exercises, uh, definitely your warm up and staying hydrated. Uh, you're doing all the right things. Uh, and I want your voice for you to last for a long, 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 long time. <laughs> so, um, yeah. what's, what's your favorite gig right now? Favorite gig ever or favorite gig that I'm currently doing? Well, you know doing? what? Favorite gig ever. Ooh. I feel like oh, this, this is a trick, trick question, question, Dave. What? <laughs> um, I, I favorite, don't have trick questions. Favorite, favorite gig, gig ever? ever? Well, you think, but I'll, 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 you know, people ask me, what's your favorite character you've played? And uh, part of my answer is, well, look, that's like trying to choose your favorite child. Uh, yeah, which of your it. children is your favorite? Uh, but I always say Lee Everett in terms of video games because he brought me so many gifts, uh, mm. notoriety, awards, uh, going from being, oh, yeah, that's that voice guy. We've heard him on a lot of stuff. To, oh, that's Dave Fenoy. So that, well, that's my criteria for him. What, okay. what, what's your, what, what, what gig really <sighs> did it for you and does it for you? Well, well doing, doing stuff, stuff for NASA. NASA. Mm. Because I'm, so like, I'm like, I'm a, a voice, voice of space, space, baby, of the cosmos. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was really cool. Um, uh, tell, tell us about that gig. Are, is this an ongoing gig or something you did? Um, it, was for, it was for a while. It was like internal stuff. So I think I've like done all the internal. So it's like now it's all done. So, <laughs> But it was like introducing new initiatives at NASA and like research. And I'm just like, dang. Like, like these, these people, people who are going, going these, these people who are using, using a greater capacity of their brains are going to hear my voice as they prepare to do things that a very small percentage of people in the history of the world very will do. Small like percentage. I'm helping them prepare themselves for the most intense experience of their lives that we can't even fathom. What, what, kind, of inf- what kind of information were you were sharing with them? Uh, you and, know, and, and did you is, understand what you were saying? Yeah, man, of course. <laughs> of course I did. Of course. If I wasn't a voiceover actor, I'd be an engineer at JV. What are you talking about? <laughs> so I wanted to be a physicist, and I wanted to be an astrophysicist, actually, at some point in college. I started out as a physics major, so I did not end up as a physics major. So part of me is like, oh, okay, I get to, you know, channel that part of my life that didn't materialize in these um Recordings. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, uh, that reminds me. And I mean, you're on set now doing a league of their own. Uh, the Russians just sent up a rocket ship with uh, a director and an actor, and they're shooting the first movie ever in space uh, about uh, uh, this actor that is a doctor and goes up and saves one of the astronauts who's having a medical emergency. Um, one. Uh, I'm surprised that that's what the Russians are doing. I would have thought we would have been doing that. I would have thought one of <laughs> one of our billionaires or, or uh, one of England's billionaires, uh, Mr. Virgin Atlantic, would have uh, done something like that. But uh, who knows? Your voice, you're doing some acting. Somebody comes up with an idea. Would I you could get- become a billionaire and just pay into the system. Well, see, I wasn't even awful. thinking. I wasn't even thinking about you becoming a billionaire. I was thinking about you being an actor doing a scene in a spaceship for NASA. Yeah, yeah. If your agent yeah. called and said, yeah, they, they want to take you in space, do some voiceover and some uh, Heck yeah, movie, I'm there. You, you do it. I'm there. I'm done. done. I'm out of here. Yeah, I'm not I'm sure. Not I'm not sure I'd go yet. Really? <laughs> out of time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. I got a, let's see another note from Johnny here. Uh, it's a connection. Oh, oh, no, that's what he just said before. I'm sorry about that. Um, there was another. No. Oh, um, Della Phillips, a bit shocked about your opinion on booths and quality of sound. Um, I'm going to address that. Um, the idea is to have great quality of sound, not necessarily great looking booth. Now, I have mentioned to students of mine from time to time that, okay, you've, you've got those uh, blankets up and you can see the PVC. 
there may come a point where you're working with a client and they can see you and see your booth that you might you might want to fancy it up uh, so they feel like uh, their money is being spent on a real <laughs> pro. Uh, but you don't have to have a beautiful booth to sound good. Right. Uh, like you, I've done a lot of traveling and I have made pillow forts in hotel rooms. I've done it in cars. We're talking about voiceover. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's not about the beauty of it. It's not about how much it costs. It's right. uh, knowing if not the science, the street science of, oh, I've got to keep this sound bounce from ruining how I sound. It's got to be quiet so I'm not hearing uh, other things going on. I, I've got to be the right distance from the microphone. Once you've done that and you've got a, a, a decent DAW, which is just about anything now. I saw a question on Facebook today. Uh, somebody had asked, um, is it okay to do a demo with Audacity? Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, an answer I saw that I wish I had put uh, down uh, was, uh, can you paint with this paintbrush? You know, any paintbrush will do. Uh, some are going to be a little better than others, but as far as uh, uh, DAWs go, they all sound the same. Mm -hmm. Some give you more opportunity to do a wider variety of things, but they all sound the same. So, sure, sure. Yeah. There's a lot, a lot of talk, of talk on, on these Facebook, Facebook forums, forums about, about equipment, equipment and, and tech, tech and all this other stuff. stuff. And, and yes, yes, quality, quality is, important, is important and having, having sound equipment is important. Is important. Sound, sound as in quality. quality. But, but it's, it's like, like in golf. golf. There's, There's a, a lot, lot of folks who show up to the course with the, the flyest nits. And they got, got the brand, the brand and they look, they, 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 but they're horrible. If a lot of y'all would spend more time on working on the craft of voiceover, combined with your love of technology, imagine that combo. But instead they focus so much on tech and I got this plug in, like a, but the, but the, who cares? Because you can't even read good. Like your reading comprehension sucks. So what difference does it make? But, but then, then you get the, the, you get the combined. And also, if, if I, I need, need to go into a studio, there are so many studios I can go into. There's a studio down the street. I go into the studio and, you know, you pay to play. I, I pay for the studio or the client pays and I get it done. But I've had so many comments about my home studio. This is the best sounding booth we've ever heard. What do you, what do you got going on in there? And I'm like, oh yeah, you know. I mean, I got 20 commercial clients right have, now. Sitting right there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, Ooh, ten dollars and it's parka. Cool. Like I'm, I'm winning. winning. But, but like, like I got I've got, got twenty commercials on broadcast, broadcast television right now that are recorded next to my winter jacket from REI. Wow. Wow. So, so if that, that's wait, wait, not hold on, hold on yeah. just a minute. I'm hearing some heads explode on Facebook right now. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm gonna get the email. So <laughs> you know what? Uh, you should <laughs> I have a collection of microphones just because I'm interested in them. I'm always e using one or of two. Usually uh, my 416 and then my 103. And I find that those two microphones cover everything. As a matter of fact, I, I think I'm about to sell some microphones because they're just sitting in a closet getting dusty. So there's going to be a big sale coming up pretty soon. Let's see. I got a comment from uh, Jibi Mankule. Very well exposed and composed. One can see the success factors. Good job for ins inspiration, Andy. I think one of the most important things uh, said this evening, Andy, was when I ask you for you, what was the work? A lot of people would have said, oh, I'm practicing the voiceover. I'm, I'm practicing, I'm practicing, I'm uh, working with my voice. You said so many other things that have nothing to do with what's coming out of your mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, that so often I, I think we forget about. Uh, be ready, uh, show up on time. Get those auditions in. And like I said, I, I really think that is our real job. Got another, oh, this is a long room from J. Horace Black. Hey, Dave and Andia. Andia, congrats on your continued success. Really like what you said and your mindset approach. Very inspiring. 
So many actors I find are stuck on the type of mic, interface, acoustics, and other equipment instead of focusing on the process, training, and being ready. Just because you buy a race car doesn't mean you're a race driver. But if one is a professional race driver, they can drive any car no matter the brand, model, or price point because they are skilled. Yeah, I forget who it was now. Somebody mentioned to me, uh, uh, just because you have a Stradivarius doesn't mean that you are a concert <laughs> quality violinist. Yeah, uh, it's, yeah. It's, it's not about the equipment. Um, you don't have to have the most expensive equipment, the most beautiful mm -hmm. booth. It just has to work. Right. right. So, I have a Rode one also, also that, I that I use. If I, I travel, travel and it's really noisy, noisy I, pull I pull that bad boy out and it works because the 416 is so sweet. And the U87 U87 too, I use that. But they just be picking up too much when I'm in really rough situations the yeah, road yeah, u87 can yeah. hear the roaches in the corner having conversations mm -hmm. um yeah Overthrow I, them. Overthrow yeah. Them. <laughs> <laughs> so um what area of voiceover are you not in that you'd like to be in or Ooh. more in i call I this like, like my olympic, olympic year dave like i'm, I'm a, a heptathlete, heptathlete voiceover, voiceover person because i, I Pretty, pretty much, much hit all, all of them, them this year. year. Um, mm -hmm. I would I say, say not, not so much, much what genres do I want to be in that I'm not. There are some some, some major, major goals, goals I have that I'm not yet ready, ready to reach because, because I, I haven't, haven't put my time in in politics and I need more uh, more under, under my belt. belt. But like announcing, announcing the Academy Awards, announcing the Grammys, announcing the you know the Super Bowl. I'm close. I know I'm, I'm close, close because, because I'm close, close and I've got, got callbacks for things, things but that's, that's the kind of stuff, stuff I think would be really kind of cool, cool that, that I could sit around my family and have them be like, oh, hey, kid, kid. you know, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, uh, speaking of which, what do, what do your parents think of your career? <laughs> I think <laughs> all my family, they're constantly like, what's Andy doing now? Huh, okay. <laughs> like, what? What is this girl doing? Where is she at? Oh, she's oh. Uh, well, you know, she's she, got a mountain, mountain what? what? Oh, yeah, that's about right. It, it, it's funny. I, I have a sister who's a physician. Uh, and my father was a doctor, a veterinarian, and my mom was a school teacher. And in so many ways, I'm kind of the black sheep of the family because first it was, you know, music. And then I was a DJ. And now I'm doing voiceover. But the one thing that they loved was, one, I wasn't asking them for money. Uh, and two, <laughs> uh, I when I first came to Southern California, I was doing uh, promos for daytime on CBS. Uh, so they heard me on, uh, 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 I can't remember the name of the soaps now, Days of Our Lives, was that one? Another World, Guiding Light, Another World, oh. Guiding Light. And my mom would love going to the beauty shop and and they'd have it on. And, oh, that's my son. That's my son. <laughs> so, you know, your parents it. are doing that about something. They're doing that about something. I'm going to tell, tell you who, who, who I really, really felt, felt proud, proud about. about. My, my dog, dog Alf. Alf. So, so I was I at home visiting, visiting my, my folks, folks and we're all sitting around. around. And, and last, last year I had, had last year I had a stellar year. year. And, and it probably, and probably if, if, if there were seven, seven commercials, commercials running, running five, five of them were mine and, and different, different different voices of mine but a dairy queen commercial came on and it wasn't my natural, natural speaking voice i go very high but a very saccharine, saccharine voice for dairy queen the dog, the dog looked at the tv he looked at me he looked at the tv he looked at me and i was like i've arrived i've arrived he was like I know that oh, high-pitched, high annoying voice. <laughs> he's kept looking back and forth. And I was like, man, either he's real smart or my voice is really high-pitched because he was like, nah, this is not right. Well, you, you know and we're all like, nah. Uh, that's a fantastic story. That's a fantastic story. Um, you know, you're doing so many things uh, that you're connected with that uh you're you're in tune with you're aligned with uh but johnny carswell has a question here uh how do you deal with copy that you don't fully agree with do you believe the job or do you make a choice to change the message 
or at least find a common ground to present the message written that doesn't truly connect with you as a person, not as an artist? It's a good question. Good question. Uh, depends, depends on, on what, what genre we're talking about. about. If we're talking, we're talking about, about politics, politics that affect, that affect me and my communities, communities and I don't agree, I don't do that. that. You know, when a certain campaign during this last presidential campaign wanted me to be the voice of the brown people and the disenfranchised people, absolutely not. No amount of money would have me do that. But if I need to sell a hamburger, I just substitute for like, ooh, cheesy enchiladas from my, you know, food truck down the street. Now I don't eat meat, but I could sell you some enchiladas, man. And so that's what I put in my mind. Or like, like a really well-made well burrito by an abuela. Like, like I imagine, imagine that, that while we're reading about the juicy, juicy burger. And it works Substitution. Out. Substitution. Uh, and yeah. the truth of the matter is you have to address it when you get that piece of copy that has that thing uh, that you don't believe in or don't like. Uh, or don't know or, or about. Or don't, don't know. Well, yeah, I, if I don't know, I'm going to look it up. Uh, yeah. or, or don't value um, I too, I'm not a, Mc, a McDonald's person, but I have done a ton of McDonald's commercials and it's just a matter of substitution. Um, what do you, what substitute, do you substitute, Dave? Dave? What's, what's your, what's, what's your substitution? substitution? I want to know. Well, you know, I, I do eat meat, so I might, <laughs> substitute, I might substitute some, some of my mama's fried chicken or my dad's okay. barbecue, which okay. I can't get anymore cause they're not with us anymore, but, uh, okay. I, I it still warms my heart and uh, gets my taste buds dancing. There you go. Uh, so there you go. Uh, oh, boy, I just had a question for you. Oh, boy, Jimmy Bancole. Can Andia just play us a quick character role? Her talk about the high pitch and her dog's reaction makes me curious. Oh, somebody's <laughs> always going to. It's like when you're a comedian and you walk into you at a party and you say, oh, you're a comedian. Say something funny. <laughs> yeah. Um... I mean, I could do it for you, but like usually when I talk to my dog Alf, I talk like this. I'm like, Alfie, let's go for a walk. Come on, Alfie, let's go. <laughs> but for Derek, it's like, the DQ was with all wizards in you. Now a DQ. DQ. Happy taste good. And it's not me. I don't sound like that, but that's what, that's the, when I do DQ desserts, that's where I am. Happy taste good. And so I, I, I do this thing, thing with my finger. finger. I do this, this, this thing with my pinky. And I'm like, I, this, this makes me go up. up. And, and I, I speak, speak from, from my chest. chest. But when, when I do high pitched voices, I speak from my throat, throat which, which is something you, you taught, taught us, Dave Fanoy. Look at that. In that class, wow, you still remember that? <laughs> ah, yeah. good. Uh, well, and because you mentioned that, what is your body doing when you're doing voiceover? Do you direct oh. yourself with your hands? Oh man, I'm, I'm a, a, I am, I'm, I'm all over the place. place. I mean, I, I understand, understand how to stay in tune with, with the, the mic, mic on the axis, axis but, but I am I the most movingest, movingest. movingest? <laughs> <laughs> I move around a lot. I am doing, I am all, everything. everything. And, and when, when I, speak I speak quickly, quickly I do this with my fingers, fingers and it helps, helps me get through words and have to do legal. Um, um, if, if there was, there was a, camera a camera in the booth, you'd be like, what, what is this? She, she looks, looks nuts. nuts. Actually, if there was a camera in the booth and I was watching you, I'd say, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Your body informs your voice. So many people oh, yeah. are holding themselves back because yeah. they're trying to stay in this one place, standing in front yeah, of the yeah. microphone, microphone, and that doesn't work. Uh -huh. uh, we're, we're all Italian when we get in the booth. <laughs> Uh, the only, only thing I learned to do is, is first of all, in terms of clothing, I wear microfiber, clothing, like athletic wear, because, because you can't hear anything. Because yeah. with all the moving I do, it would be really distracting. And also, I've trained my eyes to always, my mouth always stays on axis, and my eyes always stay here. So I can move my head any way, but I can always read the copy because my eyes are always trained in the same way without, without doing this. When I'm bending, bending down, down or cutting off air supply or doing that, I always keep my eyes. Um, and that's just something I've learned over time. No one taught me that. I had to learn how to how to do this. You know, that thing that you learned with where your, your copy is placed. Uh, I've worked with that with a number of students where they've got the microphone is 
placed a little bit under them, and then the copy's down here someplace. Mm -hmm. And you just don't sound the same. You don't have the uh, same control, same power like this. Uh, you also don't need to be doing this. Right. You need to be doing this. Um, uh, the other thing that drives me nuts, and I, I know to bring this up with you, but people reading copy off their phones. <laughs> you can't you use can your hand if your hand, hand if your phone, phone is like this. this. You can't. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. I've had to. No, I'm trying. I'm holding it in. I'm holding my iPad. Well, it's bigger than it's bigger than a phone. You said don't do it on your phone. Yeah, but now your hand's not. Free. You need both <laughs> hands free. You, you gotta be free. free. Yeah. Because like even like today, I had I had some copy I was struggling with. with. And, and I do I this thing where if I'm struggling, struggling with copy, copy I, shoot I shoot my hand, my hand forward, forward like to get, get through it. it. Like, like tough words, I do this. But in but this, this hand, hand, I'm still, I'm still doing, doing it. it. So I'm like, and if, if I, had I had my hand, hand I couldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to get through that, that sentence. sentence if and I had. truth is, you don't even realize what this does. I mean, you know the, the outcome. Mm -hmm. But I, if you said, well, why does this work? I'm sure you would not have an answer for it. It just does. Because it uh, shoots me, it, makes it, me continue. It it does something up here. Yeah, yeah. it does something up here. Uh, and people, I'm promising you, moving your hands, directing yourself. I oh, yeah, yeah. the little finger thing, but I'm going to try that now. Uh, great, great, great. The great. one that really helps me out a lot is I. I'm a, I'm a fast twitch person. person. I you know no, a sprinter. sprinter you, know, you know everything I do is fast. fast. I, I speak quickly. quickly. I get. I, get, I, tend, I tend to like. like if the, the sentence, sentence is here, here I, dive I dive off a cliff, cliff of my sentences. sentences. Like, I'm like, like Dave, no, it's really cool. cool. And so, or, or I'm having a great time. time. Instead, Instead of, of I'm having, having a great time, time right? right? So, so what, what I do is I do this with my hand, hand like, 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 like sea weeds. So you can make it more languid. Yes. yes. So I'm just so like, like, I'm having a great interview with Dave Fenoy. And this keeps me like, ah, steady. So I do a lot. With, with my, my hands, hands and my like all that hands, hands eyes, eyes and, and it gets, gets me where I need to be. What what scares you uh, when you're doing voiceover? When you're auditioning, when you're looking through a piece of copy, scares me. Well, makes, makes I would say in the class of profession, what's, what's pardon me, or, or makes you uncomfortable. Uh. Well, perfectionism used to scare me because I was trying to put on and trying to create what I thought people wanted to hear. And I was thinking about things beyond my control. So once I realized later for you, what scares me is like badly written copy. I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm like, come on, man. Someone approved, legal approved this. Come on, guys, come on. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> there, and there's a lot of badly written copy out there. Uh, so, some of my little pet peeves, when you get a piece of copy for an audition, and uh, all the instructions for how they want you to do it are written in big, bold type, and then the copy <laughs> is small, and then sometimes they gray it out a little bit. I guess it's kind of hard. <laughs> Why are you making this more difficult for me to see? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. It's, it's fun. fun. I, mean, I mean, there's, there's so, so many, many stages, stages, right? You, you, I, I, I still, I think you, you probably, probably feel the same way. way. You, you still get excited, excited when you get an uh, email, email in your inbox, inbox like audition. audition. I, I still get, get I'm like, like, all right. right. Then, then, then there's the next, next stage where you submit it. it. Cool. cool. Then the next stage, your agent calls you. Your call back. Awesome. You're on hold. Yes. You're on a bail. All right. And you get the gig and you go there. You're like, oh, this is amazing. And then you get to hear the end result on TV. You're like, man, look at that life cycle. And that's a lot of fun. Well, one of my yeah. favorite things, I, I forget stuff that I did. And I'll be somewhere and, oh, 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 that sounds like me. Oh, I remember when I did that. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's one of the most fun. Does that happen a lot? Uh, to you? A fair you amount. Just... A fair amount. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually, you actually, know what, to be honest, honest I, think I think that's, that's a really a good, good thing, thing to, to share, share with people, with people too, is, is once you submit it, Move, move on. on. Like people, people, I think they they, they, they land in this like this this this, this land of waiting. waiting. You ain't got time to be waiting because the waiting, the wait, the, you don't want to be in the waiting. The waiting is Florida. That's waiting to die. Yes. Like don't live in the waiting. Do it. Do your best work. Come prepared. Do your thing. 
and move on. Because I if you're languishing here, here, you can't accept. The universe is not, not going to give, give you anything, anything else because you're sitting over here in the waiting. waiting. Yeah, yeah. Let go, I, let go, I, I, I've, I've mentioned this before to people, uh, friends of mine who are not uh, in this business and who are not auditioning for things. You have a conversation on some random day. Oh, oh what are you doing? Oh, I'm working on this audition. You know, but uh, I'll talk to you later. And then a couple of days later, a week later, whatever. So, how'd the audition go? <laughs> and I'm like, um, what the audition? Well, you know, I, I have a standard <laughs> answer now. It happens so much. Well, if I book it, it went great. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you've you've got to let go of that. And there are going to be some things that you want more than others, and even that you have to let go of. And mm -hmm. live, live, live in your success. Live, live, live in those things that went your way, and not in the things that you wanted that didn't. Um, and that secret of not thinking about i need to make this money yeah is a big one how do you handle yeah. that man, man i wish i, wish I could, could apply, apply what, what i know, I know now, now to my golf, golf career because i'd be over a putt, putt. Like, like yo, yo if, if we, we miss this putt, putt we miss the cut, cut and we can't, we can't pay rent and that's, and that's a horrible, horrible way to live it's, it's a, a desperate, desperate way to live it's living in uh yeah it's just it comes it, it through in your performance, and it, whether it's your performance here or your performance here, it's mm -hmm. going to come through. It it it, 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 it does. does. Uh, it, it does. It's a, it's a deficit, deficit mindset, mindset. and you you, you got to have, have like an abundant, abundant mindset, mindset to actually get your thing going. Like you got to imagine you've done it already, or you're or going, going to do it. it. Or man, man how, how is this going to feel when I do do this? Instead of don't mess up. I hope I get this. Oh, don't mess up. Yeah. What do they want? What do they want? Yeah. I can't live in that. Let's see. No, you can't. And it's hard. It's kind of like, what? what? It's, it's a chicken, chicken before the egg. egg. Like, when, when does that, that come? come? You got to think about what you enjoy the most and then apply that same love and passion to this thing that you want to do. Like, even if it's fake, even you're faking a funk, try to replicate it because it becomes real. It really does. So we got, uh, while we're talking pet peeves here with Pete, Todd Weekly, pet peeve. We uh, we want someone who's conversational and relatable, not announcery. And then, <laughs> and then the copy is announcery. <laughs> Have you run into that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or you, 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 give you give them what, what they, they want, want, and then you, you hear the final, final spot, and it's like, like very announcer. announcer. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Hotel. Hotel. And you're like, wait a second, second. You, you said you want a conversational, conversational millennial in the know, and no, no, that's, that's announcer. Well, so what I, I was saying to that is just like, do two, two, two versions. versions. Do, do a version, version that you think, think it should be, do a, do a conversational, and then do an announcer. Throw that in there, show them what you have range. Yeah. I always say trust your instincts. Uh, pay attention to what they're asking for, uh, mm -hmm. and give your best version based on your instincts of that, and then if if your thought is diametrically opposed, go ahead and do it. I can't tell you how many times I've seen the copy, gave them what they asked for, and then heard it a couple weeks later, and it's diametrically opposed to the thing mm -hmm. they were asking for. They don't know. Um, yeah. Somebody said to me, I don't remember who now, uh, don't try to give them what you think they want. Give them what they didn't know they wanted, and that's you. Oh, oh, oh I, like I like that. that. Yeah, there we go. And also, so, I mean, you, you can, can respect... respect you, you can, can respect, respect the specs, specs and, still and still be authentically connected to the copy because ultimately, ultimately it's, it's not conversational, conversational versus announcer. It's, it's are, are you bringing, bringing the intention of the words to life? It's, it's not, not even about conversational, conversational versus announcer. announcer. So, so every audition, audition I get, I yeah, it, it might, might say conversational, conversational or whatever, but, but that's, that's not, not what, what I'm, I'm reading, reading for. I'm going to You're reading to connect. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, not so, so. So I think so people get hung up and they want to go and they want to write on Facebook and get angry and talk about it. But like, like that's, that's not even what it's about. about. You, you, you're you missing the force for the, the truth. Like, like, chill, chill out on that. that. First of all, what does this brand sell? What is this? What is it? What's the story you're supposed to be telling? Go Google the brand and see what their mission statement is. I do that for every brand. Even if I think I know it, I Google it. And guess what? I'll know more about it after I'm done. And then I'm like, oh, okay. This brand's about. This, this because, because it was started, started by these people, people here. here. Now, now I know more about it. Now I feel more compassionate about the product. So and now I'm already going to give, give you a more authentic read. read. And that's and why I book so much. Not because someone said conversational versus now. I don't even, I read, I read it, it, I respect it, it but it's, it's not, not about, about that. that. And 
Not about that. Why, and that's why you can connect to the copy oh. because you're connecting to who it is they're presenting themselves as. What? What? Right, right. Who is this company? What do they do? This company was founded, was founded in 1947, 1947 in Iowa by, by two immigrant brothers, brothers who lost, lost their mother on the way. way. I didn't know that five minutes ago, but now I do. I'm like, oh, I get it. I get what I get what this brand is about. And that's going to touch you in a way that allows you to touch the listening yes. audience in a way that you wouldn't have been able to had you not known and that. Guess what? It took me seven minutes and thirty-seven seconds to do that. Yeah. And, and now I got to go back tomorrow. Well, there you go. There you go. You know, so it's like, that's the thing. It's like just do a little bit more work than you are expected to, and you don't have to worry about the the, the those boundaries because. You're not, you're not even, even you're not even, even the boundaries, the boundaries have, you've, you've, you've surpassed the boundaries. You're not even in the boundaries. You're not even, you know. Yeah, yeah. That, that makes go sense. deep. Tell the yeah. truth. And you can't, tell, you can't tell the truth if you don't know the truth, if you're just making yeah. it up. And wow, that's that's good. Uh, Lenny Harrison, that's good because I stay in my email and my phone with my fingers crossed. Yeah, well, you know, do that audition, <laughs> let it go, move on. And, yeah, move uh, on. As, especially with uh, in the game world and the animation world, uh, you may have done that audition a month or two months ago before that booking shows up. I am often like, when, when, when did I do that? On? Did I audition? Oh, yeah, I remember that. Okay. <laughs> uh, Johnny, again, you are very uh, verbose here today, Johnny. I love that statement. Move on and get ready for the next audition. Yep, it's just what you do best. It's it's just that you do your best. Mm -hmm. Believe in your audition, and if it happen and if it happens, great. But if not, it's not that you weren't awesome. It's that you were not what they were. Ca what the casting director or producer heard in their head when they wrote the copy. Uh, and there's a lot of that, but once again, uh, if they heard exactly what they wanted, they could go hire that. Yeah. Um, they're putting it out there in hopes that someone is going to connect with this copy in a way that moves them, that will move uh, the audience that they're trying to connect with. So... They want to spark, you know. Yeah, they want to spark. Yeah, and and they're trying to find something original, something that that's you. It's okay that that you're inspired by this voice, this voice, this actor, this actor, but you got to bring that special thing that is you to it. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't, what are you doing? You know. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got three minutes. We're just about at it. Somebody knocking on the voiceover door right now. They give you a call. Andy, uh, uh, Winslow, somebody gave me your number, and they, they said you were the person to talk to about getting in the voiceover. What would you tell them? Okay, this, this happens, happens every, every day, day now, actually, actually Dave. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> every, every single day. day. So, 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 so to be quite honest, honest, I do I a couple, couple things. things. <laughs> I, 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 I first say to them, them to read, read everything and listen to everything. everything. And, and then, then they, they start, start interrupting, interrupting me and they say, no, no, but really, and I'm like, okay, they're not interested because they're not hearing what I said. They're, they're read, interested, but they're not willing to listen. The path doesn't sound like the path they want to go on. Which, which means, means they're, they're not, not going to be successful, successful necessarily in voiceover because that's, that's what it requires. What it requires. So, so if they, they start interrupting me when I say read and listen, I'm like, all right, cool. I send them a couple places. I send them to you for video games. I send, I send them, them to, to uh, Dave, Dave Walsh and Joseph Riano for promos to the websites. I send them to D. Bradley, Bradley Baker's website. website. Uh, I, I want to be a voiceover actor dot com. And I say, read the entire, the entire thing, thing, including the question and answer, scour, and then get back to me. Out of the thousand people who asked me for help this way, only two have gotten back to me after they read the entire website. So that's like the weeding out process. But really, to be all jokes aside, like. You have, you have to have reading comprehension. comprehension. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm meeting other, other voice, voice actors, actors in real life who don't, don't have, have reading comprehension, comprehension and wonder why they're not booking. They've got, they've got beautiful, beautiful studios, studios, and I've seen some of them. I'm like, wow, this is beautiful. <laughs> but they, they don't read well. well. Like, they, they don't, don't make connections. connections. Um, and, and I'm not talking, talking about learning disabilities. I'm talking about just not reading out loud properly. They don't know what the current trends are. Do you, Do you know, know what's what's, what's on, on the air, air right now? now? If you, you don't, don't, oh, I don't, I don't watch, watch TV. TV. I don't watch commercials. commercials. This is your business. This is your business. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I would, I would say, say read, read, listen, and observe. And, observe. Um, and, and I know that, that sounds, sounds like very, very, you know. Yeah. No, it sounds right. Yeah. It sounds right. Read, listen, and observe. 
um, and read to understand, mm-hmm. not to sound good. Yeah, um, not I, always, good. I always tell my students, look, um, it's not about sounding good. It's about connecting with people here and here. Um, That's why I stopped using headphones. Yeah. So I don't know how it sounds. Unless I have to have them on because the client's on and directing, I, mm-hmm. I, I won't wear them. Uh, but I'm surprised by how few people really understand what they're reading, especially with dialogue, especially yeah. uh, video game, animation copy, uh, that they're just trying to sing a song as opposed to respond to what this character is responding to and uh, speak in the thought of your character and the feeling of your character and the relationship of your character and the movement of your character. Mm-hmm. The, uh, an actor, or a director friend of mine said, well, you know, uh, the voice is the exhaust of the acting engine. And if you don't yeah. have all that other stuff going on first, it's not going to come out right. Interesting. Interesting. I, like I like that. that. Wow. All right. And I like you, but I got to say goodbye now. It's 701, <laughs> Andia. Uh, I, I want to thank you. You know, I never know what I'm going to get. I had a feeling I was going to get something great in a, in a conversation with you. Um, and it turned out way better than my already high hopes. Uh, <laughs> there, there's, some, there's some things you said that I think are going to uh, connect with people uh, on a level that uh, maybe they, they haven't felt and thought about before. And I want to thank you for that. Well, thank thank you for having me. And I got to give a shout out to two people, people, Andrea Andrea and Shan Berry for for introducing me (laughs) to (laughs) the amazing (laughs) Dave Fanoi because because they were the ones who told me, you must, must, if you do nothing else, you must must know this guy. guy. Oh, I haven't haven't seen him in so long. Are Are you in contact with him? I am. Um, I can I definitely, can definitely, definitely give you their info. Definitely, after this, but, definitely yeah. give them both my love and uh, I, them and I hope I, we can see them before too long. Yeah. yeah. They have they a mean 4th of July, July party, party, so hopefully. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, hopefully next year we can have a yeah. mean 4th of there July party. <laughs> All right. I'm going to let you go. You. Say goodbye. Thank you so much. And uh, wow, wasn't she amazing? Andia uh-huh. Winslow. Um, Fantastic young lady, fantastic career, fantastic advice. Uh, a reminder, this and all the other Ask Dave Fenoys will live on my YouTube channel, uh, Dave Fenoy VoiceOver Training. If you're interested in coaching sessions with me or to find out where I'm going to be teaching, like tomorrow night online for Voice Track San Francisco uh, on a self-directing class, um, Sign up to uh, get notifications at DaveFanoy.com. In the meantime and in between time, book something.